Hello everyone, today in this video I want to show you how you can set up your 2D references inside of Blender to get started with modeling. Here's a reference I drew a little while back of my character. And you can see here I have a front view and a side view and just a rendered version to see how it should look. To get this into Blender, there's a couple different ways to do this. The easiest one is you just find your reference in the file explorer, drag it in, and there you go. But you can also do this in a different way which is just by pressing Shift A, heading to image, and then reference, and you just need to find your file. I'm just heading to front view by pressing one on the numpad. I'm clearing the rotation, and then I just need to rotate it on the X in exactly 90 degree. And there we can see, this is my front reference. I tend to scale the reference up until the cube or sphere that I'm working with is roughly the side of the head. That is because I use large sizes for sculpting and I tend to scale the model down later on. But as you can see now, the reference is just stuck in the middle of our object and I don't like that. So what I personally tend to do is I just move it quite far back because then it is out of the way. I can still see my reference and in and, and, and orthographic mode, it is perfectly aligned. Um, but it just gives me a little bit more space to work with here. Then to add the side reference, because I also want to align the side reference, I just tend to duplicate the reference that I already have. I'm setting the pivot center to 3D cursor, top view, and just rotate it around the 3D cursor like this. And now I'm just gonna move the reference a little bit to the side, and there we go. That's how I align it. I also like to make a separate collection just for the references. So I just make a collection, drag them in here, and I have that reference collection just right at the top. Because what you can do and do later is um, if you turn on the restriction toggles here in a little drop down, you can click on this little mouse icon, the mouse cursor icon. And if you click this here, the references become unclickable. You cannot select the references anymore, but everything else. And that can be really useful. Just keep in mind that if you actually want to click on your references, you need to turn this on again, but I tend to just leave it off. And I could technically already be happy with the setup we have right here with the front and side reference. But there's one more thing I want to show you, which is really important to me and just makes the scene less cluttered. If you head over here to the data section uh, with the little image icon, you can see we have a couple options here. The first one, depth. This one just describes if your reference should be drawn on top of everything else or behind it. If I say front here, you can see that it is drawn in front of the cube, in front of the camera and all the other objects. If I say back, then it's behind everything. And the default one is back. So we just need, we don't need to change anything there. And the side um, basically just determines if we want to view the reference just from the front or also from the back. So if I turn on front, you can see that it disappears from the back. If I turn on back, you see that it disappears from the front. To me, it doesn't really matter, so I tend to just leave it on both. Next option, very important, it says show in orthographic or perspective. And I tend to make my side reference only be visible in orthographic mode. So I just turn on pers turn off perspective. You can see it disappeared. But when I now hit three on an numpad to go to side view, it is still there. And this way, I don't have to deal with it when I just want to rotate around my model. I just leave my front reference um, because I tend to just check some things from different angles and see if it fits with my original idea. And this is usually how I set up my references. Let's go back over what we just did. First, we added our reference, then we moved it a little bit to the back. We had a side reference, rotated it around and moved it to the right position. Then we created a collection just specifically for our references where we can toggle if we want to select them or not. And the last thing we did is just turn off perspective mode on the side reference so that we don't have to deal with it while we just want to rotate around our model. That's already it for how I set up references, but there's one more thing I want to show you, which is very useful for sculpting specifically. What I want to show you now is how you can set up references for sculpting specifically, especially with helpful for portrait or sculpting. If you head onto a camera just by clicking on it and hitting zero on a numpad, you get this little section here in the data which describes some stuff on a camera. And there's something really useful here called background images. If you just take this on, you can add an image. 
And then it says um, that you can open it here. And right currently it's a little bit stretched because it's not the resolution of the camera, but um, we can simply set it to fit. And now it is perfectly in our view. Let me quickly hide the cube so you can see it better. This is what it looks like. This is what our backdrop image in the camera looks like. And currently I'm using a screenshot of a sculpt that I did myself um, simply because I don't have to worry about any copyright issues. But technically you can put in any sort of image here. And what is really helpful if you have yourself um, an image of maybe a hat um, which is rotated in a certain way and you plan on referencing this image for your sculpture, you can add the image inside a camera inside of Blender to then position the camera in the right view, in the right location, and just check how your sculpture looks compared to the actual reference. There's a couple options here that we can change. For example, we can change the opacity. Again, we can change if we want our image to be rendered in the front or in the back. And in this case, I would like it to be in the front. And I tend to also increase it to a little bit more. Um, then, as discussed before, we can say that it should be stretched or we just fit it. And we have a couple more options like the rotation, offset, we can move it around. But it's it's simple enough to just leave it in the center. And now if I had uh, myself a, a sphere where I would sculpt on, I could, um, let me quickly just start sculpting here. If I were to like pull this out, and I was unsure if I had the right silhouette here. I could just head into camera view, position my camera. So this only really works uh, once you have already started with your sculpt. I'm just going to rotate the camera so that it fits. Also very useful here. If you had to view in the end panel and in camera to view, you can just move the camera easily with how you would move your viewport in Blender. And so I can position this around here should be correct. And then you can just sculpt, continue sculpting. And then every now and then check back into the camera, see if your shapes are correct. You can also just stay in this view and keep on sculpting. In this way, you will have a very easy time to um, sculpt. And also it's helpful to check how well you are with your knowledge and with your observations. Um, so maybe either you can use this while you're in the process of making a sculpt, or you can also use it afterwards to check if the sculpt that you have made based on a reference, if it's actually getting close to that reference. So that's it for how you can set up references in Blender. I was able to help you get started and have fun blendering.